Boys and girls, after our brilliant Europa League finish at the end of last season, we wanted quite a bit of money to spend to reward us from the board. And in today's transfer special, we have gotten exactly that with an initial budget of around £70 million. Most of it's in wage budget right now because I'm trying to make signings, and I have already made a signing. £8.5 million. A big player has come to the club. I think that he's going to do great things for us. Welcome to the first transfer special of the Jurgen Klopp Challenge with Brighton. Let's spend some money. Hey guys and welcome back to the ninth episode of the FM21 Jurgen Klopp Challenge with Brighton where today we are going through the transfer window. It is the transfer special and we are going to be signing some players, selling a lot of players because we have some players that are worth a lot of money but not actually doing a lot for our squad so I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too. If you are, please make sure that you smash the like button on today's video as well as subscribing so that you don't miss a single episode in this year's season, the second season out of five where hopefully we will be pushing for some Champions League football, or at least solidifying ourselves as a comfortable Europa League side this year. Can we please smash 15 likes on today's episode? It's a transfer special, they normally bang, so let's bang it with likes as well. That was weird, but it kind of made sense actually. As I said before, we have already made some signings, and I'm going to go straight into who we have brought in straight off the bat. The first player that we brought in was Damari Gray, on a free because you know sometimes they let you just offer zero dollars and they accept it so and we did that so he's already into the club before the deadline contract expiry thing has occurred and to be honest i've literally signed him as cover and planning on selling him in a year's time for like 15 million pounds that's my genuine plan i'm sorry to Mari great you're probably not gonna have a lot of game time for us but uh you're gonna make us some money so i'm looking forward to that and he's definitely not a bad rotation player to have. However, not going to be beating any of our first team players just yet. You know, Edwards, I think, is a, a wee bit more about him than him. However, if, if Trossard is having a bit of a stinky season, just like he did for a very good portion of last year, maybe, just maybe, we'll give Demario Gray a crack in there. But I think I'm already eyeing up a couple other left-wing, right-wing options ahead of Damari Gray. But the main signing that we made for £8.5 million is the goalkeeper that we wanted to bring in last season but didn't quite have the funds to do so. It is Carrick... Ka 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 That's not even close. Carrick. Where did I get that? Kakur. 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 Kakir. 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 I like Kakir. Okay, uh, please tell me in the comment section below how you actually say it, but we're going with Kakir for now. He looks like a great goalkeeping option, had a lot of experience over in the Turkish league, and now he's come to the Premier League, the best league in the world, and I think he's going to do absolute wonders for us in between the sticks. Only 25 years of age, and still got a bit of ability to move and improve, and of course, we all know that another player would have been more suitable for the side. I, I can't remember... How you spell his name? Lako Liv Livoko No, no. Um, hold on. I know where he signed for it, so we'll find him. I tried to make an offer for this player, but it didn't. It didn't end up going through. Here we go. Livakovic is the man that we tried to bring in. However, he wasn't willing to talk to us, so we went to Leicester City instead for not much more expensive than we had brought in our man for. But to be fair, he's not a whole lot worse and still got a lot of football left in him, so I think he's going to be a great player for the future. We've also done a lot of other deals that are not quite confirmed just yet. I won't talk about the ins yet, but the outs, there's plenty of them. Veltman is looking like he's going to leave for £7.5 million. Webster looks like he's going to leave for £8.25 million after I rejected an offer of £10.25 million because I wasn't completely concentrating. Matt Clark looks like he's going to leave for £10 million. We've also got Bernardo under offer, but nothing too exciting for me so far. We've got Lalana, who looks like he's going to be leaving for £12.75 million. We've also got Gross, who looks like he's going to be leaving for £7.75 million. And this guy for 3.8. So, a lot of deals, a lot of money coming into the football club. And some signings are definitely in the works right now. However, I don't want to spoil them just yet, as we have a lot of players that we are focusing on getting right now. If you actually take a look at the squad, though, 
there's not a whole lot that I'm desperate to improve. I think the goalkeeper was the main position I wanted to get a player in for straight away. And that's what we have done, bringing in K Karik. Why am I saying Karik? There's no, there's no R before the K. There's K K the Turkish guy. And we, if we actually compare him to Matt Ryan, I will admit, there's not a whole lot in between the two players. But he does have a wee bit more of an edge. You know, Matt Ryan is worse than almost every single stat. He's not massively worse. I just like the improvement that we have, especially considering the fact that Matt Ryan is actually wanted by a club. And if I can sell him for his market value of 12.5 million pounds, I'm not going to complain because he's not going to start any games for us anymore. And we've got enough substitute goalkeepers in the form of Ben Foster and Walton. I'd love to get rid of them. I'm not going to offer him out just yet, but near the end of the transfer window, we might have different stories to talk about. I think the only solid positions for us a cam, I'm not worried about a new cam. Right wing, I'm fine with what we've got in the right wing. Edwards has been great for us. Right back is absolutely fine. Centre back's fine. Uh, sorry, goalkeeper's fine. Centre back is probably okay. However, if the right one came up, I wouldn't be completely opposed just because Dunk is getting a wee bit older and not getting any better at football. And Sotalo is coming through the ranks, but a bit slower than maybe a better player would be able to come through the ranks. So wouldn't be completely opposed to getting a new centre back in, but I'm not rushing for it. Left back is a potential position of concern for me. Well, not concern. Bernardo was really good last year, but he's clearly not one of our best players in the entire starting eleven. Centre midfield, Basuma is absolutely fine there, but Proper, again, kind of like Bernardo, like he did well for us last year, but he's clearly not our best player. And at 29 years of age, he could not be getting much better. So Definitely thinking about bringing in a new central midfielder. And left wing, just Trossard's form concerns me. But he's he's not a bad player. So, again, a similar situation. Just kind of, if, if a good player comes up, I'll definitely take it. But I'm not going to be actively searching for it and be desperately looking for that left winger. So, just to capitalise on what I have just said, because that was a lot of information to understand. I'm looking for a striker. If, did I even mention striker? I don't think I mentioned striker. Mope was brilliant last year, don't get me wrong. However, the cover that we have for him is not what we need. And even his stats aren't insane. Like, he scored 24 goals last year and he was great, but I don't think he's going to propel this team forward. So I'm thinking about bringing in a new striker if the right one comes up. However, at right wing, we're fine. Cam, we're fine. Central midfield in Basuma's role, we're fine. But if the right CDM sort of deep line playmaker role man comes into the picture, I'm not going to say no. Centre back again, if the right player comes up, I'm not saying no. Goalkeeper's already sorted out. Left back, if the right player comes up, I'm not going to say no. And if left wing, if the right player comes up. I'm not going to say no. So that, that, that was kind of vague, wasn't it, boys and girls? But I don't want to give too many spoilers away because I've already got a couple of signings that I'm getting ready to confirm. And based off this team report, it's a pretty even team in terms of ability. But trust me, we've got some world beaters coming in and you don't want to miss it. So stick around. I'll go con confirm some signings. I will let you know as soon as they're done. Boys and girls, we have made some transfers now, and I'll go over them very shortly. But first, we have to go over the people that we have sold, you know, respect the people that we have lost. Starting off with Matt Clark, who has left the club for £10 million. Very happy to get that fee for him. Now playing down in, no, up in the Premier League with Sheffield United. Yeah, no, they stayed in the Premier League. Did just enough to stay in the Premier League. So happy to see him facing us next year. Veltman has also gone for £7.5 million. A very nice profit there of about 7 point... No, no, my maths is bad. Like £6.6 .6 .6 million. Never really got into our squad for us. So I'm happy to move him on and give him some experience elsewhere. You'll see this player exchange. And now I'll go over to the other side where we can see our first signing that we made was James Ward-Prowse. And I have no idea why they wanted to player exchange that man if you actually take a look at the man that they've brought in he's worth 9.25 million pounds a thousand pounds sorry and he's got like a potential ability of three and a half so I, i'm not entirely sure why they've gone for it especially considering the fact they've let this man go james ward prowse for 17.25 million pounds i am absolutely stoked with that fee he looks like a brilliant player we've had him in the manchester city save i did earlier on in my channel he's going to be perfect as that boxer box midfielder or a deep line playmaker on defensive duty i'm not too sure 
who I'm going to put as the box to box and the deep line playmaker between him and Basuma. Because they're actually quite similar players. I think that James Ward Prowse has a bit more about him overall. But they'll definitely complement each other in a lot of ways. If we take a look at their overview, we can see that Basuma is actually apparently the better of the two players, which surprises me significantly. Ward Prowse has more vision. Nah, surely if we break down the attributes. Yeah, see here, an average rating of 12 for Ward Prowse, then 13, 13, 13 to 14. So Basuma's got a bit more physically, but I did think the technicals would be in Ward Prowse's favour. Our second signing that we made is Os Ods Odson Eduard. He has come into the Premier League in real life with Crystal Palace, and we have brought him into the Premier League for only £16.5 million. And I am absolutely stoked to have him into the club. Mope was amazing last year, don't get me wrong. But this man's a wee bit younger, potentially got a wee bit more potential. And if you actually compare the two players, it's a bit of night and day, especially in this technical area. If we go into the circle, square, hexagon type thing, you know what I'm talking about. You can see it right here. There's a lot of better attributes for Edouard. However, the mentals and the vision isn't bad for Mope. But I think we all know that Edouard is a better of the two players. And for only £18.5 million, pounds, I'm not going to complain about that at all. And our final sign on that we have made is Minamino. And I will admit, he's not quite as good as I thought he would. I'm happy that I only brought him in on loan with the option to buy for £16.6 million. Pounds, but he's not exactly world class right now, unfortunately. So he's done all right for Liverpool in the time that he's had there. But... I can see why they're trying to sell him, and I can't really see him being activated to, to buy unless he stands out completely next season. I really wanted him to start ahead of Trossard, but looking at these stats, I'm not that convinced about starting him ahead of Trossard, because Trossard is a man that we actually own, and Minamino is someone that we don't actually own. And if you deep dive into the attributes, it looks very similar with 10 to 11 here, 12 to 11 here, 12 to 11 here. So pretty similar players overall. And I'm going to have a bit of a strain working out who's going to start there. He also doesn't have as much potential as I thought he would. So not my best signing of all time, but I think I've more than made up with, for it with the signings of James Ward-Prowse and Edouard leaving our best 11 if we go to pick it, without restrictions, best 11 looking like this now. With Ward Prowse, Basuma in there, Edouard Lalana is still apparently considered to be in, in the best 11. Because Edwards over, over here and Minamino over here definitely doesn't make more sense, does it? No, no, not at all. But I'm certainly not done with my transfer business just yet. I'm taking a look at the centre-back option who you might have seen as I was scrolling through the transfer space. And I'm also definitely looking to improve this left back position. I think that's now become a bit of a priority for me because everything else has kind of been improved to the point that I want it to. The left wing could be further improved, but I think Minamino will do enough on that left wing position to lock it down, make it his own this season. And if not, Trossart will be able to do a good job as a backup. We've still got £36 million with 133 thousand pounds in wage budget so i'm expecting to be able to make a couple more deals as well as selling a couple of more players some bids coming through here and there but let's go out let's make some more signings we have plenty of time before our first game of the season considering the fact that i haven't even moved over into the next season yet so yeah i think i think i might be able to make a couple more signings here and there boys and girls i'm pretty sure this is when at the end of this month is when we're going to start you know thinking about next season so still quite a while away still plenty of transfers to make and still plenty of money to spend it's one of my favorite days of the football manager year it's pre-contract expiry day and we have signed three players on a free the first one being a youngster by the name of kevi Vlia. Kevi Vlia? I don't think I've done terribly there. He's a right wing slash central midfield option who comes in from Juventus, so definitely has a level of ability, and we're going to try and loan him out to make sure he does improve a wee bit during the save, as he's got a decent ability, and if not, we'll just sell him for a wee bit of money. Lundstrom also comes in on a free for only £20,000 a week. Got a value of £9 million now, some really good stats, didn't do badly, for Sheffield United last season, so I'm glad to have him as a great rotation option, as well as Bentaleb, who's again 
basically a replication, except we're paying him about double what we're paying Lundstrom, and he's worth a wee bit more if we want to sell him in the future. Played decently for Schalke last year, so happy to have him in and around the squad. We've also made some general signings and sales. There's a lot of business going on at the club right now. The first thing that we have done is we have brought in Ogwene, I believe is how you say on On Gwene? On Gwene sounds about right. Jerome On Gwene at the centre back position, able to step in if we need him to, potentially being a bench player to begin with, and moving into the squad as Dunk gets a wee bit older. So I love this signing. Now, I think he shows a lot of potential for the future, and he's only been paid £7.5 million to bring him in. Absolutely love it. Absolute bargain. Great deal by me. We've also gotten rid of Matt Ryan for £20 million. So sad to see a bit of a club, a club legend go, but when we bring in a better goalkeeper for much less and you're wanting to give me 20 million pounds for a player i'm no longer going to start i'm definitely not going to say no webster has also managed to be confirmed to leave for 8 million pounds we've also gotten rid of zaha uh, yaha sorry for 7.5 million pounds this man's gone for 3.8 million pounds and gross has gone for 17.75 million pounds one of the biggest overpayments i've ever seen in my life and i think that's all the deals that we've done since last time we saw each other we're still trying to work out a couple more and we still have quite a lot of money left in the bank account so if i want to do some deals i can certainly do some i think i've got only one potential transfer coming in right now unfortunately should this guy who like there's an s and a z you got to give me some slack here we wanted to bring him in but he decided to go to leicester we're trying to negotiate a deal for coop mines but it's not really happening at the moment but we're still looking for that left back option got a couple of options in my shortlist but nothing too insane right now just keeping an eye out for players and i think we're going to sign at least one huge player before the end of the transfer window just because well, we still have 57 million pounds, boys and girls. Well, this is not a signing I expected to be making at the start of the transfer window. Riyad Mahrez, a man who has won the Premier League, won some serious competitions with Manchester City, and is now playing for Brighton and Hove Albion. Absolutely love it. He comes in with a four-star current ability and he will be able to play on that left wing position or the right wing position with brilliant stats capable of playing either one perfectly. He's got a loan move to us where he could be being signed for £41 million. I have zero intention of activating that signing fee however he's going to be a great player for a year at least and i'm sure he's going to get us a couple of points here and there with some goals and assists on the left hand side he's going to line up next to uh edwards on the right hand side and that's my plan as things stand i think if you look in the left back spot as well you will notice that another player has been brought in and he he goes by the name of which no that's not it at all which dell Wijndal, Wijndal, we're not, we're not, we're now Owen, his name's Owen, Owen is coming at left back, and he looks like a great player for the future, I'm sure he's a player that a lot of you have signed in your football manager saves this year, but I have not heard of him, or played with him at all, so I'm stoked to bring him in, a new signing, a new face for me, and he comes in for only 14 million pounds, an absolute bargain, for a player this young with a great average rating last season and with plenty of ability to improve and already i'd say a starting left back for us if you actually compare him to bernardo he's not a whole lot better and i'm not actually trying to act like he is a whole lot better in fact some would argue that bernardo is slightly better but if you take a deep dive into the stats i think that it's pretty even and i'd say that the potential that this man has certainly trumps any kind of ability that Bernardo has on top of him. And if we go to our sales page, we have managed to get rid of quite a few players as well. Going from here down, we have made a lot of deals. One of them being a signing, actually. It was a, a player from Real Madrid. It just came in on a free because he was young and free. So why not? We managed to get rid of a youngster for about £400,000. We got rid of a couple of players on loan, including Alzate, who's playing as a regular starter in the Bundesliga for BFB Stuttgart. We also got rid of Mo Moda. 
And we're gonna go with that on loan as a starter for PSV. Basically all the loan moves are starters, so I'm not gonna say that every time. Now, we sold this man who come back, uh, came back on loan for just 3.7 million pounds, so not the best deal of all time, but he wasn't gonna get good enough to play for our squad, so I'm happy with that deal. We managed to get this man out on loan as a youngster that we just brought in, so hopefully we'll get some game time. Robert's a great center back option going out on loan to the uh to the skybet championship Weir has left the club for about a million pounds potentially going up over in the future also got rid of this man out on loan a good central midfield slash left back option getting some game time in the league one we've also got rid of rk however you say it 4.4 million pounds is certainly not a bad fee at all Percy Tao has also left the club for £10 million. Pounds. This one is a great fee for a player we were never going to use. Leo Ostergaard has gone to Bournemouth, who is going to be starting in the Premier League, so that will be great match experience for him to hopefully come back and solidify his place as one of the rotation players in our centre-back position. Shane Duffy has also left the club for £7.75 million pounds after his loan spell at Celtic. Not qu required anymore, just too many great options in there with the signing of On winne and uh white and dunk and satalo so yeah he's not really getting much game time and last but not least we've got an aaron Connolly back out to west brom after a decent spell with them last year scoring three goals and eight appearances now he's going down to the championship and to be honest i think that might be quite good for him to get some game time at a lower level and in terms of signings i know that i've already been over them but we're still not done because we've got 61 million pounds and and hey, hey guys it's not my fault the board wanted me to spend the original transfer budget i mean i think i've already done that to be honest because the original transfer budget according to this we go to the finance page was was 40 million pounds and i'm pretty sure i've already spent 40 million pounds so 20 million there also yeah 17 16 yeah i've definitely, I definitely spent the original wage budget however i've still got plenty of money to spend so I'm definitely going to be looking out for some players. I don't think I've got any offers out at the moment. I was thinking about bringing in Gabriel Jesus on loan instead of uh, Mares, but it didn't end up happening because Mares' deal went across the line first and Gabriel Jesus didn't look interested. So, I mean, it could still go across the line, but I doubt it will. Apart from that, John Stones potentially could be coming in, but he doesn't really want to join our club right now, so we're just waiting and seeing what happens. I, I love that you can actually like sign people that are, are apparently not interested in your club at all. Like That that just annoys me slightly, I'm sorry, but, but it, if I'm searching for doubtful, I want players that are, are right on the cusp. But whereas if I go here, it, I actually made an offer for, for Saul, and he accepted it, and he only didn't sign for our club because of the contract negotiations he just wanted astronomical amounts of money and we couldn't afford it but he was happy to come to our club it's and for some reason he doesn't come up on this because he's extremely not interested like what like, he's, he's clearly sort of into the club so if i'm searching for interested i would like to know everyone that's even mildly interested in talking to me about signing so it's just my wee rant for a second it's it's now a, like a, probably like a 15 minute video at this point so Maybe this will be one last update as we come up to the to the start of the Premier League season. Actually, I've still got a, an abundance of time, just about a month to do some stuff. But I think that we're certainly coming to the end of our transfer business. Although we have a lot of money left, I think it's, it's probably going to simmer down now as we've gotten all the positions that I felt like we desperately needed. However, if the right player comes up for the right price, you know I'm going to be spending the money. So let's see what we can find and let's go back into the market. Well, boys and girls, we're ready to go for our first game of the season, and I've made a lot of transfers since last time we saw each other. So our team is 100% complete for our first match against Newcastle, which will be in tomorrow's episode, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. But for now, let's go over what we have done to end the transfer window. And, you know, I'm going to start with the signing. We've only made one, and it's Coopin Miners. And I believe this is one of the best signings we've made so far. Another central midfield option could even play all the way back in centre-back. I love his versatility. I love his ability. I love his age. And I love that we've only paid £25 million for a world-class central midfielder. I think he's going to be a great player for the future and a great player for right now and my laptop job okay so there needs to be a bit of backstory here so my, my laptop needs to be plugged in so that i can record in like high definition and i rest my laptop charger on a fan because it's so far away from the plug where my desk is 
and sometimes it falls off the fan and it's just fallen off the fan. So I'm, I'm going to go fix that. Okay, sorted back on the fan. If you're confused as to why it's a fan, it's it's one of those Dyson ones and it just, just happens to be there. So it's circular, it falls off really easily. Now, it's not important right now. What is important is all of these deals that we have completed. And we're going to start from the top as a normal person would. We've gotten rid of Richards on loan. He should get some game time. That's good to see. Ben Pearson, after one season at the club, has been sold for only £4 million. I think that is a really low ball sale for me. But it's still... A double profit of what we brought this man in for he's not going to get a lot of game time for us so i'm happy to sell him for that fee we've also managed to get rid of reese i don't know who he is so i think that's why i sold him and dono's gone for 10.5 million pounds and he could be going up to about 13 million pounds so i love that sale for us never really broke into the first team never did that well when he did again an appearance here and there so i'm more than happy to get rid of him also sold another Youngster, that doesn't look very good. Um, Milikar, 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 if I keep saying it over and over again, will it become the correct, correct pronunciation? He's been sold for £2.9 million, so only £200,000 of profit, but he didn't have that much potential anymore, so happy to get rid of him. Also gotten rid of this guy on loan, don't know who he is. Locady has gone for £7 million, so happy about that one. Lalana has left the club for £12.25 million, and now he's gone to Everton. So a nice bit of profit for a player that we didn't use that much and brought in for free. A big one here, Queena has left the club on loan. And he's going to get some game time in the Serie A, and I'm hoping they'll come back a better player. I just didn't think with the players that we have in the squad anymore, I don't think he's going to make too many more appearances this season, so I thought it was only fair to get rid of him. Also got rid of Rafa Marin, who was the man that we got in as a centre-back from Real Madrid, and Zaquiri has gone to Borussia Mönchengladbach to be an important first-team player, apparently. I believe it when I see it, boys and girls. So, that is all the deals that we have finished for the end of the transfer window for well for the end of this episode we've still got more transfers that we could do i've still got plenty of money to spend 71 million pounds it just it keeps coming my way i don't understand but it just keeps coming my way i think that the club clear out is basically done now there's no one else that i want to desperately assign or sale so it's looking good it's looking good overall and this is the squad that i think i'll be using for the first game but you'll have to find out whether or not i'm using it on today's on tomorrow's episode where I will be playing our first game against Newcastle and then playing our second game against Burnley. So make sure you do like this video if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe to the Rex or Film YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the future uploads. And I will see you all later.